My name is Zach and I'm freezing out here, so I'll make this quick. In this bite-sized build video, I'm gonna show you how I made this New England covered bridge mailbox. New England is known for its covered bridges, which is what inspired this project to begin with. As fall came around this year and the leaves started changing colors, it really got me excited to take my drone out and capture how majestic these structures are. There are two of these covered bridges near where I lived that I find particularly beautiful. The first one is the Taftsville Covered Bridge in Taftsville, Vermont, and the second is the Middle Bridge in Woodstock, Vermont. I had a blast flying my drone all around these two bridges so I could get some ideas on how to design this covered bridge mailbox. Here's the design I came up with in Fusion 360 and a little animation to show how it's going to go together. I'll post a link to these Fusion 360 design files in the description. Since this project is going to live outside, I decided to get some western red cedar as the stock material because of its water resistant and rot resistant properties. To cut out the design, I'm going to be using the Inventables X-Carve CNC machine. If you want to learn more about the Inventables X-Carve, I'll have a link in the description where you can find more information about it. Many people who are unfamiliar with CNC's think that you just simply push a button and it will cut out whatever you want. That is not the case. I probably spent 20 to 30 hours designing this piece and tweaking all of the cam settings to get the right tool paths. The reason it took me so long was because I'm pretty new to the manufacturing tab in the Fusion 360 software, but as I get more and more familiar with it, I'm sure that I'll take less time to do something like this. After cutting out and sanding the side pieces, it was time to move on to the roof. I swapped out the straight flute end mill for a V carving bit to cut out the shingle pattern on the roof. Next I ripped down some more cedar stock for the front and back pieces. These were too wide to fit on one sheet of stock so I cut them in half and glued them together later. All the pieces are done being cut on the CNC and I've taken the time to sand them all smooth. Because the roof is at a pitch on this design, I need to cut a 45 degree bevel on some of these parts and I'll do that now on the table saw. At this point, all the main pieces are ready to be glued together. I took some time to think about the order of operations on how I wanted to glue this together. While I'm gluing these pieces together, I'd like to take a quick moment to talk about Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a way for you to show your support for content creators like me by directly donating money to support my efforts. In return, you'll get exclusive rewards like extra behind the scenes content, free merchandise, and monthly video calls to chat about making things. Patreon support means a lot to me because it's a way for me to connect directly with you. When you support me on Patreon, you're helping make these projects and videos happen. I will have a link in the description as well as at the end of the video where you can check out my Patreon page and find the different reward tiers for supporters. Thanks for letting me take the time to talk about Patreon and now it's back to the build.
After gluing it together and getting to this point, I was really pleased with how it was turning out. I did notice, however, that the end grain was exposed on the front and back edges of the roof, so I trimmed down some more stock to trim that up. The last major piece I needed to build was the lid plate, which actually bolts on to the lid of the mailbox. I used the V-bit to carve my last name in a nice cursive font. My end mill wasn't long enough to reach all the way through this stock, so I cut the remaining depth on my bandsaw. Before I can mount this front piece onto the plate, I need to drill out these rivets that are holding this little knob here on the lid so that I can mount this front piece straight to that lid. My original plan was to put my last name as well as a little circular knob on here to help the mail carrier pull open the lid, but it really didn't have enough room to do both. So what I'm gonna do is cut a recess back here behind the back piece to act as a little lip that you can slide your fingers in and pull the lid open. After I do that, I'm going to spray paint these letters black and then sand off that outer layer. The last step was to apply a water seal finish. This really brought out the color of the cedar wood. At this point I was ready to remove my old mailbox and install the new one. The covered bridge is designed just to slide right on top so it'll be easy to take off if I ever want to. The only thing I need to be careful is that this needs to sit at just the right height so that there's an even gap all the way around here and I can open up the lid. Until I find a more permanent solution, I just drove in some screws to prop it up to the right height. At this point, the covered bridge mailbox was done. I had so much fun making this covered bridge mailbox. 
If you're new to Bite Size, you may not know that I make a lot of other cool project videos like this, so I'll put some links here for you to watch. Hopefully this project inspired you to make something that you're excited about. I'm gonna head back inside where I've got a nice fire going, and I'll see you guys next time.